Hello and welcome. Let me take you through the game which I have around the table. It's a mixture of old bird and young bird. Let's start with the wild rabbit. The taste for a wild rabbit is to pull the ears apart. If it comes nice and easy, you've got a young rabbit and also a rounded face. The partridge, which is a French part, an English partridge, the wing. The top end of the wing, if it's pointed, you've got an old bird. Rounded, you've got a young bird. And also, have a look at the beak. Quite hard, old bird. Wood pigeon, That's a, young a very young mm. wood pigeon. Yeah, newly born, in fact. And then we go down to the uh, pheasant, the bib of the pheasant, the beak is hard, and also the feet. Very, very hard. Would you leave me a little bit of time? For well, me, I've got please? a little bit more time than you. I'm talking about wild game, hard to catch, poultry, mm. easy to catch. Are you saying that you weren't out to catch them? Would you mind? Have you finished? I have finished. Thank you very much. Uh, turning to the poultry, uh, here we've got today beautiful duck, the English duck, Ellsbury duck, which shows that the skin is very smooth. So you've got a lovely bird there and it's plumby. The only problem is sometimes it's a bit too fat and it lost a lot of fat when it's, while it's cooking. You've got big knees there, which shows again a very good quality of a bird. Then you've got free round chicken. We try to get as much as possible uh, poultry to be free range. As you can see, for example, we've got a, a battery chicken there, which obviously doesn't even hold itself very well and doesn't taste very much when it's cooked and uh, not recommended. We've got a lovely, beautiful little quails and we've got a lot of fruits there. Now, uh, the fruits, unlike the fish, m are very nice with the poultry and the game. In the fish, they needed to offset some of the richness of the mousse, but in the game and the poultry, they goes beautifully well. Now I'm going to show you how to debone a chicken. So, wing, winglet out. And very important, pull the skin aside using your two finger and then the wish bones. So you can have a clean cat using your two finger, pull it through, and it comes out nice and clean. Keep all that skin because when you stuff the bird, you're going to need it to fall back on the bird. Sit the bird there. The bird has been in the fridge for several hours, so it's nice and firm. You're working through the carcass. Oysters out. There is nothing magical about boning. The only thing that can happen to you is that you cut your fingers. So what? I've cut mine so many times. But it is so nice when you have deboned something to give it on the plate to your guests so they haven't got to fiddle with all the little bones of that chicken. And I would say practice make wonder. Now you may not do it as fast as I do deboning and you may do it slowly and I would suggest that you do so. But think of the end result of a simple little chicken, you will do an exclusive dish who's going to impress all your guests. You see how easy it is. I think what is terribly important here is that the chicken should be very, very cold. That little part here has got to come out. That's out. You only take the bone of the tie bone. Finger on the knees. Knife not towards you. Scrape it. So that's the half of your chicken and the other half is ready to be taken through onto the other side. Now these four poussins have already been deboned in exactly the same way, ready to be stuffed for a recipe using apples and calvados called poussins artois. Let's go through the ingredient of the recipe. Veal, fillet of veal, breast of chicken which has been, been through the robocoupe, after that into a basin into it eggs and cream. 
when the, everything is finished, whisk together, mushroom chopped up finely, and shallots which have been sweated into the recipe, inside the poussin. For the garnish, apple turned up, little juice of lemon to keep them nice and white. For the sauce, all the trimming of the apple, calvados, cider, and cream. These are the basic of your sauce. Clarify butter for the cooking of the poussin. So I'm now going to start with the mousse. The meat has been through the robocook. I'm working on ice so that it is nice and cold. I will add the eggs, not too fast. Beat it well. Never use a whisk for that. You want the mixture to become as homogeneous as possible. If you've got a problem with it and it's split on you, a little tip is to hide some, put add some salt into it. It usually brings it back together. Or half of a white of eggs. The reason why is it, on, it is on ice, the meat is nice and cold, so all the albumin and the sugar of the meat is here. As you can see, it started to blend itself together. Going to add the rest of the egg. And it's smooth. I'm now ready to add the cream. Not too much at a time, too. It's nice and shiny. I'm giving it plenty here. I'm ready to finish the cream. And it's not quite a mousse because of the eggs. It's between a farce and a mousse, so it's, it's not coarse, but you couldn't really call it a mousse. And I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy with the consistency of it. So I'm ready now to add to it the mushroom and the shallot which have been sweated. I'm folding that nicely together, blend it. Taking it out from the ice. I'm going to pepper it a bit, season it, salt. Mix it well. And I'm going to put it in the fridge to become a bit thicker, to cool, cool itself. This is ready to go into the fridge. I have here some, same recipe, who has been into the fridge for about an hour. I'll take my little pusta, which has already been deboned, open it up, little salt and pepper. Do not try to take too much mousse at the time, otherwise you'll have problem when you're going to try to reform the little poussin. Folding back together. Pushing back the legs. And form it like that, you see? It's quite easy. String underneath, one knot. And another knot around your leg. And that little poussin are ready to go into the pan to become nice and golden.